all your school rugby all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. Hello and welcome to this week's Top 5. After a, a wet and wild autumnal weekend of schoolboy rugby, uh, it's the fourth in our Top 5 School Teams of the Weekend series this season and uh, should be a good one, I hope. Uh, before we get started though, just a, a few bits that we really love if you could uh, help us out with. So please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really makes all the difference for us to be able to get content out to you, but also just for us to be able to continue to spread the word about Schoolboy Rugby and all that it has to offer. Uh, do also check out our social media channels at NextGen15, that's at NextGenXV on Twitter and Instagram, assuming of course that all of Facebook's systems are working now. Uh, do also head to our website www.nextgen15.com, that's nextgenxv.com. Thanks very much and on with the video. Now as we said at the start of the season, as would the weeks kind of go on and form and what we expect of certain teams etc start to emerge these videos will get slightly different in terms of the teams that emerge onto them the results will start to look a bit closer and we really see some examples of that this week partly of course because of the weather being a, a great leveler and a and a closer of score lines that it was this weekend but also because we're starting to understand the form of various different teams. So a few different names, a few really interesting and close results, as well as the occasional just magnificent performance across this week's top five. Remember, of course, no particular order, just alphabetical. It's not a ranking, it's just five we've picked out. And the first of those five that we've picked out is Hymas College up in Yorkshire. They had a tremendous result of the weekend in really quite horrible conditions, beating Ampleforth College 10-5. Ampleforth had been unbeaten all season up until this point. Uh, but Hymas College came in and absolutely dug deep, really gritty, 10-5 victory to give them a winning record as well. They've only played the three games so far this season because of one reason and another, but now they've got a 1-2 lost one ratio. They get into our top five with a really dogged, determined uh, display and uh, we're really really impressed by that result and judging by everything we saw on social media it was uh, a really really cracking effort so we're delighted to have them in our top five this week. Up next aside that we put a bit of pressure on actually this weekend saying that this was a crucial three week period for them uh, facing Sherburn and then Wellington College and then the St Joseph's Festival uh, and that's of course Millfield as you can see. Uh, they put in a brilliant performance away at Sherburn. It was horrifically wet, uh, but Millfield showed that they have that blend of sort of backline talent, forward power, and of course that sort of awkward game that they've always had. But they showed the ability to dig deep in really quite challenging conditions uh, to make it three from three with their 19-5 win away at Sherburn, who are a top, top side as well. Uh, really impressive performance, but more importantly than that, they've set themselves up to build that momentum that they need going into what is a crucial two-week period. Wellington College at home, followed by the St. Joseph's Festival. That's about as challenging a two-week period as there is. And if there's a school that can handle it, it is certainly Millfield. And it would not surprise us at all if they featured in the top five a couple times more throughout this season. Up next in this week's top five, Skinners, a side that I did not expect to get the result they, they got on the weekend. And I can only apologise to them for that because... They dug deep for one of the most famous victories they've, they've had in a while, I think. They were away at Tunbridge School, who have been one of the form teams in the country in the early part of this season. They've been absolutely fantastic. And Skinners, in conditions that traditionally they have reveled in, uh, went and nicked a 5-0 win down at down at Tunbridge. And uh, do you know what? Nicked is, a, nicked is an unfair term, really. Uh, they performed magnificently. They dug deep. They worked unbelievably hard against a very, very, very good schoolboy side and came away with a 5-0 with a win. Uh, absolutely fantastic. It levels up their record for the season. Played 6, won 3, lost 3. Uh, deservedly into our top 5 this week. Can't speak highly enough of how, how impressed we are by them. Absolutely outstanding from Skinners. Fourth on this week's list, St Albans. Another side that had an absolutely outstanding result. One that we couldn't have predicted uh, and we can only apologise to them for that. They hosted Haleybury, a side that, remember, we saw live at Saracen's Stonex Stadium 
uh, where they drew with Seaford College, who've proven themselves to be a really cracking side. Haleybury are a good, good side. They were unbeaten coming into this. And yet St Albans, in some tricky, tricky conditions, welcomed them to town, bounced back from defeat against St Benedict's the week before, and secured a 17-10 win against Haleybury. That is outstanding from them. Uh, and it gives them a positive record for the season now at this point. Played 3-1-2, lost 1. Just a tremendous performance from them. Um, can't speak highly enough of it. That That's a side of real quality that they've they've turned over there and have shocked many people uh, and perhaps unfair of us to be shocked because clearly St Albans are a very, very good side. The final team on this week's top five is Woodhouse Grove. Uh, they were away at RGS Newcastle. We thought this would probably be a pretty even contest, uh, but Woodhouse Grove, just outstanding. Uh, away from home, tricky, tricky place to go, and they came back with a 31-7 victory. Uh, so not just a, a good performance, but a dominant one. Um, this is a side we knew we were good. We knew they were good. They they beat Barnard Castle on our live stream uh, back on the opening weekend. They had a really cracking contest against Sedba a couple of weeks back. Um, and, you know, they may have just been favourites. Um, RGS are a good side, though, and we, we really thought this would be close. Uh, so for Woodhouse Grove to come back with such a strong performance um, is how they managed to get into this week's top five. Really, really impressive. I think Woodhouse Grove are a real team to look out for. You know, you turn over Barnard Castle and RGS Newcastle and you have a really strong performance against Sedba, who you know we know are going to be one of the top three sides probably this year. Uh, that's a tremendous team out there and uh, well worth keeping an eye on. So that's this week's top five. Five new entrants into the to the top five for this season. Uh, week four, you probably would have expected a couple of teams to maybe um, have stayed from a time before. Uh, but just shows what a, an unpredictable weekend it was, what a brilliant weekend it was. So great to have a couple of sides that are probably a bit lesser known in there as well. But tremendous performances earning them the right to be there. But of course, there were loads and loads of sides that missed out um, that could so easily have been included in this in this week's top five. Uh, there really were some outstanding performances right across the country. Perhaps chief among those performances for us was Kirkham Grammar School hosting Denston College. Uh, Denston, who we know are a top side and probably Kirkham's most challenging opponent to date. And Kirkham took a, a 33-5 victory. Uh, they're going to be a side to really look out for at the St. Joseph's Festival. And they were so nearly into this top five, I almost made it a top six. Uh, elsewhere... Bab Lake and King Henry VIII, after their merger, seem to be absolutely flying. 52-0 win against Leicester Grammar School, unbeaten this season, really impressive. Wellingborough winning 40-10 away at Bedford Modern, again another unbeaten side, really impressing. You know, unlucky to miss out on this top five, to be honest. Uh, it's a surprise they've not been in yet this season, actually. RGS Worcester winning down at Dean Close, traditionally a really tricky place to go. They've won four out of five, they've won their last four in a row. RGS Worcester sneakily looking very good. Merchant Taylors, uh, we're big fans of theirs because they had us along for their uh, their TENS tournament back in December when we were trying to get some live streams going and uh, they've certainly been looking good this weekend, beating UCS 50-10, absolutely stunning result, almost as good as Mount Kelly at Milton Abbey, winning 61-0 on the road. Unbelievable stuff. Monmouth are a side that people need to pay attention to. They very nearly made the top five this week. A 1917 win against Sir Thomas Riches. They're unbeaten now. That was their toughest test and they came through it unscathed. Uh, Mount St Mary's College on the other end of the scale. A 48-3 win at Nottingham High. Absolutely fantastic. They've only played twice. They've scored over 100 points. They're on absolute fire. As were Windsor boys over the weekend. A brilliant victory in the school's Vars against Sir William Borlasers. Radley College, they've been in our top five, I think, twice now. Uh, and they were very nearly in it again this week. 28-17 victory on the road at St Paul's, who we know are a good side. Radley were missing players. It was horrible conditions. They were unbelievably clinical to get yet another victory on this unbeaten start to the season. Stowe, another unbeaten side. And another cracking performance from them. 29-0 at home to Oundle. They're playing absolutely fantastic rugby. Uh, of course, I want to mention our live stream on Friday night where we took in the Oratory Derby, Reading Oratory against London Oratory. Uh, the Reading Oratory were outstanding in their finishing. Some of their play was just glorious to watch. Really exciting stuff under the lights at Grasshoppers. If you haven't seen it, check out the highlights. They should be on the screen below, I think. 
Uh, Brighton College, really impressive win at Trinity, uh, 21-7 away from home. Trinity, a really good team. Uh, we've seen that through some of their results. I mean, they, they put 50 on Wimbledon College in the Cup in midweek. Uh, and Brighton had a sort of slow start, losing their first two. Things weren't quite right. But since then, they've beaten Dulwich College. They've beaten Trinity. They're really coming to the boil at the right time. And you know, when they head to St. Joseph's, we know they love that festival. Keep an eye on them. They're sneakily just starting to find their form, aren't they? KCS Wimbledon almost never lost it. But in midweek, they lost to Hampton. Now, not a surprise result, but it could have destabilised things. It didn't. They went to Wimbledon College, the big Wimbledon derby, bounced right back, won 26 0 away from home. And then, of course, Wirral Grammar, a side that really impressed us over the course of this season so far, winning 37 0 at home against Wilmsley High, another really strong win. So, loads of sides there that had cracking performances. You know, there's an argument for any of them in the top five, but ultimately, the top five went to Hymas College, Millfield. Skinners, St Albans and Woodhouse Grove for some fantastic performances in a variety of different ways under a variety of different pressures. Really impressed with all five of those. So that's it for this week's top five. Please, if you liked it, give it a like. Makes all the difference. Uh, and let us know what you thought of it. You know, do you agree with the top five of the different teams that you'd like to see in there? There are loads of arguments for a bunch of different sides. So get in the comments and give us a shout. Uh, and while you're there, please do, as I keep saying, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Makes all the difference. We're also always available on at NextGen15, at NextGenXV on Twitter and Instagram. Get in touch. And of course, head to the website for loads of content, www.nextgen15.com. That's nextgenxv.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you all the time. Please do get in touch. And thank you very much for watching.